That was Doja Cat. Moo, bitch. <laughs> she needed a little bass. He's like, you want some dick? She's like, no, thank you. He's like, oh, okay, sorry. Looks like somebody already tried to use our trash can. Dead, dead teddy bear. <laughs> That's a dead friend. Yep. Ugh. I don't know. I, I, I didn't. I didn't have the balls to ask her. I was like, you know, I didn't want to say why black people like, you know, Mopar cars or Dodge cars or whatever, Chrysler Group. <laughs> so, nobody's answered me though. And then my black friends are like, mm, we're not friends. They're like, ah, oh, come on, help me out. I want to do a U-turn. I look like homeless Jesus. <laughs> Moo, bitch. I'm a cow. Nada. Hang on, mama. Mm -hmm. Hang on, mama. So. Ooh, somebody cleaned up. Nada. Good. But I like nothing. I like boring. I don't want drama. But sometimes it happens no matter what you want. So I think what I was saying earlier about Bud Bud was uh, Buford, he used to get scared when there was fireworks out back and there's some people in the neighborhood that shoot fireworks off and it, oh my God, he would just shiver. Like he was freezing, but you know, he was just scared. So, oh look, they cut the lawn. <laughs> my private little lawn. Clouds are back. It's nice. It's only 105. <laughs> Get the windbreaker on. Oh, that guy moved his truck. Yay. So he's alive. Ooh, this city looks like they sprayed for weeds. Or the whatever, the vendor. Landscaping crew. Oh yeah, they sprayed with the real stuff. So I hope everybody's ready for the weekend. July 4th weekend, and then you get Monday off too. I don't, of course. And I was down there at the machine shop today and so you guys work on Monday? They're like, of course. Dropped off some more motors. Oh yeah, I dropped off those Mojo Memphis motors. And then three, or no, four of the, uh, it was the 12 inch, they're, they're from Majestic. Uh, it's a two and a half inch, basically like a P3. But for some reason, I don't know if it's a defect or just somebody was punching the woofers or whatever, but the coil would impact into the gap and you couldn't get it out. And so sometimes what I end up having to do is just, you know, fry the, the motor, cook it on the hot plate, and then remove the steel. And then I'm left with some nice magnets that just need, uh, they sometimes lose a little bit of their power, but you can still just zap them again and they're fine. But um, <clears throat> to me, it's kind of a waste on that motor. And so what I'm gonna do is just extend the poles on those and build out some three inch motors. I think I built one. Oh, got a car. I built out one and it turned out nice. So, I just put a little more steel on it. I think right now I'm just using it as a, a modeler for when I gotta shim up the coil and set the spider and then jizz on the bottom. Uh, one thing I've realized in making my Franken motors is that um, 
one of the reasons why the pole is typically solid or at least down for like an inch or two is when you shim it, it, it needs that extra uh, surface area to make the, you know, make it straight. So when it's too short like that, it ends up wiggly, wiggly wobbly. And so I can't shim directly in them. But if I use one that with a solid pole, which is what I use, basically it's like a template, like, or a, as a, what do they call it? A jig, as a uh, service jig. And uh, so then I just, uh, you know, whatever frame I'm using, I just put it on there, build the, uh, as they called it when I was working in semiconductor, as a sub-assembly. But it's also a subwoofer, so it is a sub-assembly. There's a cart. Mama. Huh? There's a cart. Right yeah. there. Goodness. That's a quarter. That's a 25 cent waiting to happen. So, but anyways. We will leave. Oh, they're empty. We'll just leave them for the Goodwill people. Oh, somebody's calling. Oh well. Do you do you uh, drive for me, Mama? Here. The old hand clamp. So when I first met Sherry, she had a storage, and I was like, "Hey, you can move your stuff over to my place." Well, it wasn't really my place; it was my mom's place. And that's how we got the futon home in her uh, Subaru, which we called the Goobaroo. Pretty rad. Did you see that bolt? Got to come back and get that bolt. No. Those bolts make good holes in tires. So, but uh, what was it? It was an 83 Subaru stick. I tell you what, Sherry was super sexy in it. You tell me how to drive? Yeah. Woman, you tell me how to drive. But it was like a little four door. And she had her monkey boots and she had a job. I didn't even have a job. I was a loser. I do no, no. I did have a job. I was working. I was selling. Uh, uh, what was it? Septic tank. Um, septic tank additives. Through um, oh shit. Septic tank additives through uh, cold calling. So. That was one of my numerous shitty, you know, whatever for money jobs. I did have one uh, telemarketing job where um, they told us to be like, they told us to like cuss and uh, like, like be hard asses. And then they, we'd get in there like 4 a.m., call the East Coast. And it was just to sell Granger um, first aid kits. But these first aid kits were like 170 bucks. Wow. And, uh, they promised us like $14 an hour, which was like killer back then. And, uh, oh, let me go get that bolt. And, oh, they're in the car. And so we get there at 4 a.m., fucking get souped up on coffee. And then uh, we're like, hey, let me talk to your boss. Rah, 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 rah. And they, you know, just real gruff and all that kind of stuff and real hardcore. And don't give me that shit, you know, all that kind of stuff. Just to sell fucking first aid kits. Uh, they ended, ended up having to sell other stuff, but uh, we never got that far. I think we only worked like, I think, what is like a like less than a week? And we were like, okay, uh, we're going to quit. We want our money. And then they're like, oh, no, you have to work like two weeks. 
and all this other bullshit in order to get that money. And I was like, oh, these fucking guys. And, you know, they were uh, they were tough guys to us too. So, so, but back then, like my friend Russ, he would uh, he'd like go back and then throw a brick through their window and and then steal like uh, those um, what do you call them? The uh, they used to have these things where you uh, you put like it was like a quarter. And it was like a cardboard box. Honor system. <laughs> it was an honor system where, you know, you paid like 50 cents or whatever for a candy bar. And, uh, you know, it just depended on, you know, they're like, please, please pay. And so I remember one time I was probably 14. And, uh, oh yeah. I was skateboarding at this one space over in an industrial complex on like a Sunday and this wood shop had forgotten to lock up on their spare door that I guess was let, you know, to like let in air. And I got in there and uh, that's how I got my first tools for, uh, where was it, was the second one? I'm not sure. So I got my tools to build skateboard ramps. <laughs> and so then I ended up building some uh, skateboard ramps and uh, building like a little small skate park in the medical, it was like a... I guess it wasn't being used. It was like a medical parking lot. <laughs> there it is. See? Look at that. <laughs> Danger! So. But, uh, oops. So yeah, that, but anyways, I think Russ went back and threw a cinder block through their window and then stole their the whole thing, like he stole the, uh, all the candy bars and all the chips and there's money in it and a bunch of other stuff and so, but that was Russ. Russ, Russ, Russ I, I, he was a very bad friend. <laughs> I got into lots of trouble with him and then of course he framed it so that I was the one that was getting him in trouble. I'm like, motherfucker. You know, of course I was, I was like super low self-esteem and also, I didn't really have any skate friends, and so we used to just skateboard a lot and go around, and cause trouble. Ooh. Hopefully. Good. Oh, good. Hopefully they locked it. Oh, God. Right, that was the jizz heaven, or whatever, poop heaven, or whatever the fuck they would do back there. <laughs> so, but, oh my God, the stories for me and Russ. We used to do all kinds of crime, petty, petty crimes. But, they, well, that's the thing is, you know, like, we were skateboarders back then, and uh, um, skateboarding was, like, illegal. Like, you couldn't skateboard anywhere. And, uh, you know, if they asked you to leave and you were on that list and you were trespassing, they'd fucking ticket you. But... But, you know, like, and we, uh, we actually grew up in this area, a little bit north of here, so, in some uh, apartments. I think I told you a little bit about that. My mom, who was it? Jack Conant was a friend of my dad's. And he and his, can I fit through there, you think? Yeah. We're gonna find out. Uh, Jack Conant was a friend of my dad's. And Jack had made his money in uh, waste management. So not the waste management, but he had his own company. And basically it's just about subscriptions. <laughs> made it. Paint job. Yeah, my paint job don't give a shit. I don't want to hit his. So, but Jack made, like dude, he was fucking retired, like big money fucking 50 grand a month kind of retirement. And then of course, I think they ended up selling their business to uh, waste management, you know, which is like a consolidator. Cause really you're just buying the subscriptions from these people and plus the equipment and some other stuff. So really the money from waste management comes from the subscri subscriptions, whether they use it or not. So of course you're overcharging them, you're making a profit. But anyways, uh, Jack had died. He died of a heart attack playing what he loved, which was tennis, because it has love in it. Or, and uh, 
Somebody keeps calling. I gotta take care of this. Hold on. I'll do another video.